Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about our thoughts on Game 4 of the NBA Finals. But before we hop into all that, got to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, as always. And today, it's going to be Bill S. Thank you so much for like, commenting, subscribing, turn on post notifications, and just showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. But let's hop straight into this episode because we got a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that we want to dissect about Game 4 of the NBA Finals. And I kind of want to start off with the way that Phoenix came out I felt like for the most part on both ends of the basketball I feel like both teams were kind of composed to start the game off for the most part uh Phoenix got off to a 10-4 uh run in the beginning of the game Devin Booker definitely came out you know was very aggressive and I think Phoenix made it a decision to you know really get this guy going uh starting the the beginning of this game because we already talked about you know him having a 10 point performance in the previous game really was luck last year not much of an offensive threat from that standpoint and ultimately that resulted in played a really big part in Phoenix coming out with a loss but I mean Greg what are your thoughts on the way that Phoenix played early on in the game specifically and what were some things that you felt like Milwaukee took away from them on the defensive side of the basketball I think uh, the way Phoenix came out, I think that Devin, like you said, Devin Booker, they wanted to get him going early, and I think that was the main focus. Him coming down off of pin down screens, him coming off of off ball screens, him coming, to, him getting the, him getting the ball in triple handoffs, him isolating him on Pat Connaughton and guys who like who just have no chance of guarding him, um, and getting and getting Devin Booker to the spot. But one thing I want to talk about is Chris Paul. I mean, Chris Paul, first quarter, only two points, um, only attempted two shots, not really, not really effective, not really effective in the first quarter, and staying with the second quarter a minus a minus nine plus and minus no no he didn't he only shot two shots and missed both wasn't really effective for the for the Suns and I thought the Suns um really made it tough for him I think putting Drew Holiday on him if people do not know Drew Holiday 6'3 205 got a lot of strength got a lot of upper body strength that can really just push around a guy like Chris Paul um and made it tough for him and I think that what the Suns should have done is really just uh, make make Drew Holiday work I thought it Drew Holiday, they made it so easy for him to guard and getting Chris Paul in early offense, make manipulating the defense where he can get Chris Paul going to his spot. And so I think I think the Bucks did a great job making it tough for Chris Paul, and that's what kind of that's what kind of set the tone for the Milwaukee Butts on the defensive end, and that just turned it up on the offensive end as the game got going. Yeah, and I, I kind of want to add on to that a little bit because yeah you talked about drew holiday being you know basically the chris ball stopper you know he was very disruptive on that end of the basketball but ultimately i feel like you know milwaukee's team defense has definitely improved like in early in the series you know we all talked about Brooke Lopez not defending the pick and roll all that well playing drop, drop coverage and everything but I feel like Mike Budenholzer we have to give him a little bit of credit because this guy he's implemented a defensive strategy that has ultimately worked out for the um, Bucks in the last two games I mean Chris Paul and Devin Booker they're not getting those too many of those open looks in the mid-range area like we all know that Chris Paul he loves you know get out to that snake dribble really probe around the 15 16 foot mid-range jumper and ultimately you know just get himself going from an offensive standpoint from that perspective but he's definitely been minimized and I think some of that has to do with Drew Holiday's great on ball defense he's arguably one of the best perimeter def- defenders in the entire NBA um, if you ask guys like Damian Lillard and Steph Curry but I think we also have to give credit to you know Milwaukee's team defense Giannis Antetokounmpo doing a great job being a rim protector we all saw the game saving block that he made on deandre Maze. ayton late in the game and everything and then we also have to talk about pj tucker's intensity on that side of the basketball i know this is a guy that kind of you know gets a little bit frustrated with committing fouls and everything it seems like the refs had kind of been a little bit inconsistent when it comes you know just the calls on um both ends of the basketball and everything it kind of seems like it changes um depending on the game and everything in the location but other than that i think milwaukee is just very locked in they they did a good job you know playing their brand of basketball making a noted decision in their heads that they're going to attack the paint relentlessly specifically with Giannis Antetokounmpo and I felt like early in the game he was a little bit shy offensively they didn't really feature him too much in the offense it kind of seemed like they were trying to make an emphasis that they wanted to get Middleton and Drew Holiday going in they certainly were able to um Drew Holiday didn't really shoot all that well from the field 
finished the game four of 20, but he still had a very positive impact for the Bucks from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the Bucks really set the tone. They re I love when they play aggressive. I think nobody can stop that. Um, and when they're playing aggressive, nobody's going to be able to stop that. And it shows. Like, look at the box score. People say, okay, why did Phoenix lose? I'm going to tell you. Offensive rebound, 17 to 5. I mean, if you look at if you look at the Bucks guards, Drew Holiday had three offensive rebounds. PJ Tucker had three offensive rebounds. Giannis obviously had five offensive rebounds. Pat Connaughton had nine rebounds total, but three of them were on the offensive end. Bobby Porter's had two offensive rebounds. So these are guys who and their their guards compared to Phoenix are willing to put their head down and go in the paint and battle with those bigs down there and be big down there and grab grab extra possessions from Milwaukee and those are huge those are game changers and then also and I want to I want to say something about that real quick I hate to interrupt you Greg no you're good but I, I feel like for for a team like Phoenix who's been so disciplined from every aspect of you know their entirety of their games and everything from an offensive standpoint defensive standpoint but when it comes to rebounding you can tell these guys they just don't seem locked in from that category like they don't box out um nobody's making an effort to you know find find Giannis and Antetokounmpo and you know the rest of those big man Brooke Lopez even a guy like Bobby Portis has been able to come up with some offensive rebounds and then perimeter wise they're they're also giving up a lot of long rebounds which are ultimately ending up becoming three-point shots or you know just second chance points for Giannis and they're committing more fouls and stuff like that so when it comes to you know just the rebounding game I don't think that they're making a a, a, a big enough effort to you know box out guys on that side of the basketball yeah you're totally right and then another thing about bringing up discipline uh why did the Phoenix Suns give up 17 turnovers yesterday. They turned the ball over 17 times yesterday. So you have, again, you have to give credit to Milwaukee and their defense for just rattling these young guys and rattling Chris Paul, a veteran who we really not custom to seeing him turn the ball over like this coming off picking rolls and making it really tough for him to find guys open. And just, I thought they were very sloppy going down the stretch of the games and that's what i feel like there's a reason why they couldn't close out the game they're very sloppy their possessions were not very efficient and the turnovers played a big big part of part of that yeah and and when it comes to milwaukee's offense i actually really enjoyed watching it last night i mean Me these too. guys they made an effort to you know just throw a lot of offensive schemes at them and this is something that i've talked about in the past where you know Budenholzer, he he made sure that you know he made a concerted effort to you know be diverse from that standpoint. I mean, you have some moments in the game where you have some Chris Middleton isolation um, scenarios. We we all know that this is very adamant when it comes to the Milwaukee Bucks offense. But they also allow Drew Holiday, you know, make decisions out of the pick and roll. And then you, we already know like Giannis, he gets his ISO situations and you know scenarios where he's able to capitalize on whatever the defense is giving him. But they also made a concerted effort to make. Um, to just throw a lot of different actions at, you know, this Phoenix Suns defense, depending on how they were playing, whether it was small ball lineups or whether you had DeAndre Ayton in the game, they just made a concerted effort to, you know, take advantage of whatever the Phoenix Suns were giving them. And then that's not even to mention, you know, the side screen and roll with Giannis and Chris Middleton. That's shown to be very effective, not only in this postseason, but in just years past. So, I mean, I really like how Milwaukee's been playing overall, um, especially taking a guy like DeAndre Ayton out of the game for the most part, because he's been in foul trouble. And, and that's not even to mention like guys like Devin Booker, who's also had a tough time guarding people um, last night and everything. Thing. But ultimately, I think Phoenix, they just have to find a better way to get back to their bread and butter. Ultimately, I agree. And then uh, the final point I want to bring up is the final five, the final five minutes and 30 seconds of the fourth quarter. Uh, the Bucks had 19. The Phoenix had eight. Uh, Phoenix shot three for 10. The Bucks shot six for 15. The Bucks went to the free throw line six times and knocked them all down. And Phoenix turned over two, turned it over two times. So kind of what a, nicely, what do you see those final five minutes? Like that huge block, um, the intensity of the game. I just really enjoyed that. It was, it was a fun atmosphere uh, in that building. I, I think I think Giannis and the Bucks they just capitalized on the momentum that they had with their whole home court advantage. I, totally I mean, agree. we saw Middleton. Like I said, I talked about him always being in isolation scenarios. But you know, from an offensive standpoint, he really brought that win home for the uh, Milwaukee Bucks last night. I mean, shot, scored forty points. Don't remember what he shot from the field, but you know, from a defensive standpoint, Giannis was also making key plays. And then we got to talk about Drew Holiday once again and PJ Tucker what they did. But they were just getting contributions from all eight guys out there i mean pat Connaughton, his Brooke huge Lopez, shots bobby yeah. porter's even you know had uh 
had some key moments in that game where, you know, he was coming up with some offensive rebounds, you know, just drawing fouls. So, I mean, with all that being said, Phoenix coming into game five at home, they definitely have to make some adjustments. Um, they have to be a little bit more disciplined and ultimately they just have to find ways to put the ball in a basket at an efficient rate and cut down on those turnovers because I feel like the turnover battle and the rebounds is definitely going to be one of the biggest factors and swing factors in who becomes the NBA champion for the 2021 NBA season. I, but, totally, I totally agree. But you guys let us know who you think will win the series ultimately in the comment section. I got Suns in seven. Greg, who do you have? Bucks in seven. Bucks in seven. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Thank you so much for like, commenting, and subscribing, turn on post notification, and just supporting our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out. Let's go viral.